Welcome to Excel Basics video number 10. In this video, we got to talk about the Insert Function dialog box to search for a particular function and get help with function arguments. Now, here's a picture of the formula bar. We're going to click that Insert Function button. It'll open the Insert Function dialog box where we can search for functions. And then once we select a function, we can use the Functions Argument dialog box to help us complete each argument with a correct entry. Now let's go over to the Sheet Search. Now here's the task we've been given. We have a price of a car, the annual interest rate, the down payment, and our ultimate goal is to calculate the monthly payment for the loan. Now, if I click in cell B14 and hit the F2 key, man, I do not want to have to remember that complicated finance formula to calculate monthly payment. Well, luckily, Excel has lots of built-in functions for calculations just like this one. We actually could go up to the Formulas ribbon tab, and there's actually a function library. If you're in finance, you might click the drop down and look through here. Lots of common terms in finance, like FB for future value, IRR for internal rate of return. And you notice if I hover, it says for this one, returns the internal rate of return for a series of cash flows. If we keep going down and searching, especially if we're in the field of finance, we of course would immediately choose PMT because that's the term we use for a payment on a loan. And if you hover your cursor, you can read calculates the payment for a loan based on a constant payments and a constant interest rate. Now you can go through each one of these logical text. These are the categories. Date and time, remember, in our last video, we talked about the end of the month. But there's lots of other functions in the date category, like net working days. That one's amazing. It reads, returns the number of whole work days between two days. That sounds amazing. Look up and reference. Math and trig. If you needed the arc cosine in your trig class, or you needed to calculate the combination, or other functions like degrees, or radians, like for your trigonometry class. You could search through that. There's also more functions. Oh, there's one of my favorite statistics, all sorts of powerful statistic functions. Engineering, cube, information. Compatibility is a strange one. These are older functions that have been replaced by more modern functions. So that's one way to search for functions. But here's a great way where you don't even necessarily need to know the category. Now, monthly payment, I need a function right there. I can come up and click the Insert Function button. That's a little f of x from algebra. If I click it, it opens up Insert Function dialog box. Now I'm going to click Escape. Down here, there is a keyboard. Shift F3 opens up Insert Function. Now I'm going to just try and type something here, monthly payment on loan, and Enter. And just like that, this doesn't always happen, right at the top, it's highlighted in blue. And down here is a description. Calculates the payment for a loan based on constant payments and a constant interest rate. That's exactly what we have. Now it gets better than that. Once you select the function, you can click OK. And look at this. It will walk you through each argument. So rate is the first argument. You can come down here, and if you don't know what rate is, there's a big hint down here. This is the interest rate per period for the loan. For example, use 6% divided by 4 for quarterly payments at 6% annual percentage rate. Man, that's really helpful. I can click in the next argument with my cursor or hit Tab. Sure enough, NPER is the total number of payments for the loan. Now I'm going to click Escape here because I want to do some pre-calculations before we fill this out. For example, where it says rate, it suggests that we divide 6% annual rate divided by 4 for the number of quarters. Instead of doing that right here, I'd rather do that over in the spreadsheet. So I'm going to click Escape. 
Now, here's the price of the car, the annual interest rate, or APR, down payment. Well, we have a couple of calculations first. Remember, in that dialog box, it said take the annual rate and divide by 4. Well, we don't have quarterly. We have monthly. So I'm going to do that calculation in the cell and label it over here following Excel's golden rule. So monthly interest rate. That formula, equal sign, and I'm going to up arrow, up arrow to get the annual percentage rate. And I'm going to divide by 12. Now, wait a second. I thought this violated Excel's golden rule. Remember, if a number can change, put it in a cell with a label and refer to it in your formula with a cell reference. But if this really is monthly interest rate, and then eventually we'll have a monthly payment, and that's never going to change, that doesn't violate Excel's golden rule. Because guess what? The number of months in a year is not going to change anytime soon. Now I'm going to hit Enter. OK, so 0.4%. Notice that's already formatted. If I go to home, I can see that it's got percentage number formatting. Now, years, that's given. And now we're going to also need the total number of payments to get our formula to work. That's going to be total months. Well, if we have five years, we simply come down here, equals, up arrow to get five years, or whatever year I put there, times 12 months. I'm allowed to put that 12 because 12 months in a year won't change anytime soon. Enter. Now, loan amount. Well, if the car costs 24 total and we're doing a down payment of 2, then we simply need to get 22,000 as the total amount for our loan. That's going to be equal sign, and I'm going to up arrow to get the price of the car, minus, and then up arrow to get the down payment, and Enter. Now we have everything that we need with cell B3 selected, Shift F3. And I'm even going to try something different. I'm going to type Loan Payment and Enter. Sure enough, it came right up again, Payment. Now I can double click that, click OK, or hit Enter, and that will open my Functions Argument dialog box. Now I want you to notice something. The cursor's in Rate. I can put whatever I need there and then Tab Forward. Also notice that the function is already in the cell. Now, that's the way we do it if we were searching for the very first time, right? I'm going to click Escape. What if you've done this function many times so you can just type it out? Equals PMT, and then I'm going to accept it by using Tab. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, I do not remember how to complete each one of these arguments. Well, here we can use the keyboard Shift F3, that is so cool. And it will help us figure out what to put in each argument. All right, is the interest rate per period? Well, guess what? We already calculated that. So I can simply, with my cursor in rate, come over and click on the correct cell, monthly interest rate. So I see B9. What's also great about this is it shows the cell reference, and off to the side it shows what is actually in the cell. Notice that's not formatted. Over here, as we talked about the last few videos, that's number formatting. But underneath, functions and formulas never see the formatted number. They see the underlying number. All right, now I'm going to hit Tab, NPER. I'm reading down here is the total number of payments for the loan. That's the total number of months for us. So with my cursor flashing, I click on Total Months. That's 60 right there. Now I can see the 60 right there. I hit Tab. Present value is the present value. The total amount that a series of future payments is worth now. Now that one's not very helpful unless you're in finance. Then it makes perfect sense. But we want to use common sense here. What's the present value of the loan? Well, it's 22,000. Now with my cursor in PV argument, I'm going to come over and put the amount of the loan. And there is the preview right there. Now, I can hit Tab. And I want you to notice bold, bold, bold. These are not bold. When you see arguments that are not bold, that means that they're not necessary to get an answer. Future value is the future value or cash balance you want to attain after the last payment is made. Zero if omitted. 
that means a balloon payment at the end. And we don't have any. Type. We read this down here as a logical value. Payment at the beginning of the period equals 1. Payment at the end of the period equals 0 or omitted. Now, almost all consumer loans, which this is our end of the period or end of the month that you make your payment. And notice it says 0 or omitted will assume that it's the end of the period. So that's why these two arguments are not needed. We don't have any balloon payment at the end. And our loan payment is being paid at the end of each month. So we don't even have to put anything in for those arguments. Now, here's something also awesome about the functions argument dialog box. There's a preview of the unformatted answer. And down here, that's the preview of the formatted result, $413.15. Now, we're never going to use this in any other calculation, so we don't need to worry about rounding. Now, I can click OK. And when I click OK, that is amazing. F2 to put that in edit mode, PMT, those three cell references, Enter, or F2, you can use that huge, long formula there. I'm going to click Escape. Now, the reason that it is negative is because a function like this in finance knows cash flow. It knows that this money is coming out of your wallet or purse each month. Now, of course, we followed Excel's golden rule here. Each one of these is a formula input. And our formula down here, I'm going to hit F2. Notice those are cell references pointing up to these other formulas. So that loan amount of 22,000, total month 60, and monthly interest rate 0.4%, those are all formulas that the PMT function is looking at. Those formula inputs are actually formulas. And those three formulas are attached to our actual formula inputs. I'm going to click Escape. You wanted a car for 24,000, but you decided to go with a car for 34,000. So I'm going to edit that number and watch what happens when I hit Enter. Immediately, loan amount will change. And of course, that will be reflected in our PMT. So when I hit Enter, just like that, now you're paying $600.95. Now I'm going to Control-Z. You decided instead on a car that was 27000 and when I hit Enter, the interest rate said 3.95. And notice that's pre-formatted with number formatting, so we see that percentage symbol. But when I hit Enter, monthly interest rate will change, and also the loan amount already changed. So when I hit Enter, all of those changes from our formula inputs, our formulas for monthly interest rate and loan amount update, and so does our PMT. Now, of course, you decided to go back to the original one, so I'm going to control Z, Z to undo both of those changes. And there it is, $413.15. All right, so the Insert function button up here, or Shift F3. Let's look at another example. We have a bunch of house prices, and we want to calculate the average. Well, we've typed this one out. We did this in video number one, equals. A, V, E, R, average returns the average arithmetic mean of its arguments. That's what we want tab. We didn't have to search for that one. Now I'm going to click in the top cell, and we're going to use our keyboard, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, and Control, Backspace to jump back to the active cell. Now close parentheses and Enter. Now that's fine. We actually got our average in statistics. It's called the mean. It added up every single number and divided by the count. But oftentimes, when you're averaging, if there's a few really small values or a few really large values, like these two over a million dollar houses, then that will tend to push the average up. So you were making this calculation, and your coworker said, hey, look, you got to use the median calculation when you're getting an average for house prices. Now, median literally means to sort. So you'd have to sort every single number in perfect order and then find exactly the one in the middle. You don't want to do that. 
because you know you can simply search for a function. You know the calculation is called median. So I either click this button up here or Shift F3. I'm going to type up in the search, median, and Enter. And then sure enough, right at the top, median returns the median or the numbers in the middle of a set of a given numbers. That's exactly what we want. So I'm going to double click that or click OK or Enter. Now this one's easy. We can just enter the whole column. So I click in the top cell. We can see one number. But I'm totally allowed to use my keyboard, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace. That's pretty cool. Control, Backspace jumped us up. And the range in number one argument is correct. And I can see over here, it shows me all the values. Well, of course, it can't show all the values here. But there's a tiny preview of that whole column. There's the unformatted answer. And there's the formatted median calculation. Now I'm going to click OK. And there you go. You can see there's a huge difference. That's why real estate people use the median. It's a better estimate of a typical value in a neighborhood when there's a few really large values or a few really small values. You can see that the average calculation was much bigger. All right, so in this video, we saw how to use insert function dialog box. And we saw how to do the median calculation. And then up here, we saw how to use the PMT. And of course, we also saw Shift F3, the functions argument dialog box, to help us figure out what goes into each argument for a given function. All right, that was Excel Basics 10. And next video, Excel Basics 11, we'll talk about all the different things you can put into formulas. And be sure, if you like this video, click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. We'll see you next Excel Basics video.